Welcome back. This is the Better Way with Gersen Kimura podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me today and listening to this new episode. So recently I've been doing more guest episodes and I personally have enjoyed them very much. So I would like to hear from you as well. Did you like them? Would you like to have more guests on the podcast? Um, I absolutely loved the last two guests that I, that I had and the last two conversations with Alina. So this one was about how she went from bodybuilding to now taking a totally new different spiritual path and she has started sound healing and she's actually really really amazing so if you are in in phoenix area please check it out and also the other one was with amanda who shared with us this absolutely amazing recovery story from mind body syndrome and how she totally transformed her health and how weightlifting was literally the the last piece right that kind of clicked in the right place and now it's like okay now I'm feeling so much better and I can say that I'm almost over all these issues that she had previously so I hope you enjoyed these episodes if you haven't listened to them yet please go back and listen to them because I gotta say like they're absolutely fantastic they were really um they made me extremely happy I I I felt so much joy talking to both of these ladies and uh I personally learned from both of them so definitely check them out if you didn't yet another ask that I have is as always if you uh, are watching this on YouTube please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel we are getting close to thousand people soon but you can help with that so have me reach that little uh, little point where we reach uh, 1,000 people. That would be absolutely amazing. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, there you can leave me a five-star rating and review. And finally, also join my Fit and Fuel Facebook group if you are not there yet. So these are all the announcements that I have for you. And let's move on to today's topic. Today's topic is this. What should be the focus for women over 40 plus, right? And obviously I'm talking about in terms of fitness and in uh, in terms of health. What should that focus be? And you may guess what I'm going to say. And if you guess that it is strength training, you are right. Why am I talking about this again? Because recently I've had, again, more conversations with people, with current clients, with former clients, who have told me that this has changed everything for them. And these women are 40 plus, and we know that, of course, in our 40s and even more so in our 50s, the hormonal shifts are uh, are happening, and we are approaching perimenopause, menopause, which will make certain things harder, right? It will make it harder to put on muscle, keep the metabolic uh, rate high. And of course, a lot of women start to experience weight gain, right? I don't want to gain this weight, but it feels like I don't have any control over this. So this is so many women's story. And what they then tend to do is what every, you know, everybody Where everybody goes like logically is this, I'm going to have to push myself harder with workouts and I have to eat a lot less. And you already know that I'm not a big fan of this this approach at all, especially if we're talking about the calorie cut is now going to be like hundreds of calories down to the point where you're now eating 1200 or 1300, something like this. Because if you are putting your body under so much stress by restricting calories so heavily, your body will suffer and your body will start doing the opposite of what you want it to do. And what the opposite is, is that it's going to pare down muscle, especially if you combine this with lots of cardio. And there you are, you're starving yourself, you're hungry and hangry and your hormones are a mess. And also you're losing your muscle. At the same time, muscle is the tissue that gives you the longevity and vitality that you're looking for not to mention that it's going to give you the shape that you're looking for. And because muscle is metabolic, is such an active tissue, it requires a lot of energy. You really need to have it on you so that you can keep your metabolic rate high. And having more uh, muscle mass also makes your fat loss easier when it's time to do that. So this is the the foundation really. And I wanted to go over this because I I hear from people all the time, like how easy it is to jump into low calorie diet. So for me personally, because I have moved away from this super low calorie place, I don't know, years ago, it's probably been like more than, I don't know, close to 15 years that that I did something so, so, so low calorie. 
But to me at this point, it's even difficult to understand <laughs> how can anybody force themselves, like put themselves to a place where they eat so little. They're starving, they feeling they feel awful, and they still keep going. And this is just not what you want to do if you are a woman um, who is 40 years old or or uh, or more or older than that, let's say 40s and 50s. You got to do a different thing. So your approach really shouldn't be so much about how much weight can I lose? Your approach should be so much more about how much muscle can I put on my body? This is your, yes, it serves you already now, but this is a big investment into future as well. So I really, really encourage you to do that. Now, I also want to give you a couple of examples. And I mentioned that I've had conversations with previous clients and current clients where this has become again like so clear and women are telling me when they when they actually start taking this to heart and doing the thing everything changes for them right it's not okay not everything it's not that they they lose like 50 pounds and you know these miraculous things but we're talking about health first right let's talk about health first so how are these people then experiencing the change, right? When they start lifting weights. And I'm going to read you uh, from one of my posts. So uh, with this one client, um, she had a lot of problems with her hormonal health, right? And the, her main concern that really caught her attention was really low testosterone, right? And you might think, okay, she's a woman, testosterone, why, why are we talking about that? Women need testosterone too. So some of the signs where you might know that your testosterone is probably not in a good place is when you lack like drive to do things. You're just like meh about everything. You also lack sex drive, not interested at all. So you just don't have this like vitality and this like urge to like do things. And like, I'm, you know, like this, I'm going to go and do things and I'm feeling empowered. So if you're lacking all that, that feels, you, you feel like so low and kind of defeated all the time and nothing interests you. So this could be one of the things you may have low testosterone. Of course, it can be other things too, but just to give you an idea, like what that might look like. And also if you don't have a good uh, muscle building ability, this is also related to testosterone. So she had very low testosterone. She also had other uh, problems. She had very, very bad periods, painful, lots of bloating, so much bloating, brain fog, um, sleep issues. Did, did I mention that? Um, and her doctor said, yes, you know, one of the things that stands out from this test is that your testosterone is super low. And she said, okay, before I try anything else like uh, HRT or something like this hormone replacement therapy, I want to see what I can do with my nutritional and, and training changes, right? What can I do when I change these things? Because she had known that this diet that she had done previously, which really was 1300 calories, and I believe she did this for about a year, she knew that this wasn't the right thing to do. And I'm glad that she knew it and that she admitted it to herself because a lot of people would never First of all, they wouldn't even know necessarily that this is a wrong th thing to do. And that's what I'm here to tell you. Don't do it. Or if they know that it may not be the best thing, then they still ignore it because they still want to lose weight so desperately. So in the past four uh, months with this client, and we're in fifth month now, we started making these changes to get these hormones to a better place. And also, I know that she still wants to lose weight in the future too, because this hormonal mess had definitely gained some, um, caused some weight gain as well. So here's what she says. I had my follow-up uh, lab work this past week. I have doubled my testosterone levels in just three months. My doctor was shocked. While I'm still on the lower end where I need to be, it is so validating and motivating to see numbers change all due to my strength gains and eating enough food. My body is healing and I have proof. I'm excited to see where I will be in three more months. Okay, so she, like I said, she had suspected that following this, by the way, very popular, about 1300 calorie uh, diet per day, uh, that this had caused her some hormonal troubles. And of course she's right about it. The hormones don't go crazy on their own. Like I said, of course, you know, uh, in, in midlife, let's say or 50s or so, the hormonal profile will change. 
However, she is in her early 40s and probably the changes are not as significant yet. So these are definitely more lifestyle related changes, right? So now she has a lot less problems with her periods. Um, she just messaged me that she hasn't used sleeping pills for a while. And like I said, her testosterone had doubled, right? So here's, here's the evidence for you. You need to eat more. You can't starve yourself and you can't, um, you know, do these super low calorie diets for extended periods of time and also don't do them at all. Like cutting anything so low is not good for your health. And a little follow up too, and this message was also uh, recent. So she said that I can tell you, I can feel that my body is very happy. It's telling me in so many ways, sleep, focus, energy, concentration, everything is better. So it does work and please don't ignore your health. Don't ignore it. So you may wanna ask what's next for this woman? Well, we're gonna go into a cut when it's the right time for it. Right now it's not the right time yet, right? So we're still working on healing the body because the damage was quite significant. But her eating more and lifting weights uh, are the things that have really helped her. Now lifting weights, she has, um, done usually three workouts per week she is focused on building muscle and this is of course a really really great thing for all the reasons that i mentioned before and she has needed that food in order to gain that muscle now let's talk about her weight gain right so when we started and where she's now we have increased her calories by 700 right so from 1300 to 2000 at the moment we might go up a little bit more and she has gained two pounds, one or two pounds, you know, depending on the week, it's a little bit like fluctuating, which is normal. One to two pounds, 700 extra calories. So this, um, these new calories have been put into good use, right? Because she hasn't gained body fat. We have kept track on, on her measurements. Everything is good there. So that little bit of weight gain, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing to worry about, but she has definitely, um, uh, you know, improved her body composition already. She's a lot stronger. And like I said, this is also investment for the future. And when it, you know, when the time becomes to go into power cut, then uh, she will be happy that she did this process because now she has a lot more muscle and the cut is going to be easier and we never have to go, you know, down to 1300 calories. Absolutely necessary. Okay. Then the next thing I wanted to share with you, and also same thing, you know, lifting weights and eating more, why this is so important. And I also want to share uh, another, um, she's a former client, so we're not working together uh, anymore. We did uh, maybe a couple of years ago, but we're still in touch. And she told me that she's now 59 years old. She just got her DEXA scan done, and it showed that compared to 10 years ago and now, she has not lo lost any muscle. Her muscle mass is in the same level. Imagine that, 49, 59. You know, everybody's talking about how early 50s, mid 50s, oh my God, everything goes to shit, right? Like hormones are a mess. They wreck my health. My metabolism slows down. Oh my God. But because she has done the work all the time, right? Throughout these 10 years. By the way, she didn't start lifting uh, until I think late 40s. So she has done the work over the course of 10 years and her, and her muscle mass is still high. It's in a really good place. So that tells you that we really can't be blaming everything like, oh, my hormones are just doing stuff to me, right? And although yes, changes do happen, I've emphasized that many times already today and I will never say that it's easy for women in midlife, it's not. It's harder, but that's why we have to be more intentional. And if you're doing what this woman has done, you keep up doing your workouts, you know, approximately three workouts a week, and she's doing mostly powerlifting, you can maintain that high metabolism. You can maintain that high muscle mass. Just don't run after every shiny object that's like diet here, diet there. Uh, do this like quote unquote fat burning workout that's like super high intensity five times a week of like boot camps or stuff. This is not what you want to be doing. I'm getting like super fired up because this is a big thing. And this is such a big, big mistake that so many women are, are making. So uh, she also says that last summer I was just focused on maintaining and not gaining. 
right? And I am so much stronger after nine months. So again, another piece of evidence here that don't be in this diet mindset all the time. So she said, I was just, all I wanted was to maintain. Good. Take that pressure off from yourself to like diet all the time. <laughs> Let yourself be in maintenance and build strength. Like she says, I am so much stronger after nine months. This is awesome. This is amazing. And this is what we want. And like I said to before, fat loss is always easier for those people who have higher muscle mass. They can eat more. They don't have to cut their calories down a ton. And, you know, the, that maintenance phase, it can be a little bit different for a lot of people, you know, from people to people, it can vary. But if somebody has done like a lot of dieting, then um, four months is really the minimum, minimum that you want to be eating higher calories before cutting. And actually it's more beneficial if you stay there longer and then you cut and then you get the results that you wanted to get. It, it, they may not come with like just one fat loss cycle, by the way, you may need multiple, especially if you have a lot to lose. So don't think it's going to happen like just like that, you know, in 12 weeks and boom, I went from 200 pounds to 160. Probably not, <laughs> very likely not. So you may need a couple of um, fat loss cycles and just you know sticking with it but building that foundation focusing on strength training taking the focus off from all that like weight loss weight loss weight loss weight loss and i get it it might be hard to do especially considering like all the messaging that we have around us all the time how it should be done and you know who's more and you know you go to a regular i don't like bookstore like a million books on on weight loss and, and dieting so if you can sometimes just let go of that mindset, and especially women, 40 years and older, focus on muscle building, have that as your first priority, and things will get a lot better for you, right? So this is all. I hope that the message was clear today um, and that you learned something from it and maybe it helped you to kind of let go uh, of that tension and then that pressure to always be in the weight loss mode focus on health too because especially the first example that i shared today you can really see what lots of dieting can do is for especially if you don't have muscle to support that and this is not a good place to be and start taking more responsibility for you know your how you're living your life and, and, and therefore like what your hormones are doing because you are impacting your hormones by your lifestyle like, uh, like that's, that's something we have to, um, keep in mind as well. So, all right, this is all for today. Thank you so much for watching or listening and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.